What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, you guys were requesting that I do a tier list of the pay per views from 2022 from WWE only on the main roster. I'm gonna only keep it main roster because that's the pay per views that I pretty much watched. I didn't watch too many NXT pay per views this year, um, but I definitely watched pretty much all of the, the, the main roster pay per views. So, you guys wanted it, so I created a tier list. And I wanted to uh, pretty much uh, put them in the respective tiers as I as I see fit. Um, this year for pay-per-views personally have been pretty good, uh, especially with Triple H taking over. The, the pay-per-views that Triple H was pretty much uh, in charge were pretty. They were fantastic. All of them, for the most part have been fantastic to watch and even the ones that vince mcmahon had been a part of and been the creative deciding factor there were some good ones there as well not every pay-per-view was stellar and um and it must see but i feel like for the most part i don't think there was any pay-per-view this year that i was like this is just awful this is bad this is this shouldn't have even happened i, I don't think i can say for this year and for the first time in a long time where there was a pay-per-view where I was like, you don't have a problem skipping. I feel like there was something you can enjoy on each and every pay-per-view uh, from 2022 this year from WWE. And not just one match. I, I, I want to say like at least two to three, maybe even four matches or half the card you can somewhat enjoy and have a good time with. And that's not a bad thing. Even when Vince McMahon was in charge, there was still a lot of good things on the show. And there was also some misses. But for the most part... They knocked it out the park. They did pretty well this year, pay-per-view wise. So we're gonna get right into it, man. Let's set this bad boy up, man. Appreciate all the love and support. Oh man, I have a question. Yeah, are you tired of sitting in chairs that you feel like, oh my back mm. is bothering you, mm. or, or or the ones where the armrest doesn't get to the height that you wanted to? Oh, yeah, mm. or, or the ones that don't rock back and forth like the the rocking chair you used to be in as a kid. You see all that? You see all that? Mm -hmm. uh, if that sounds like you guys, then what are you waiting for, man? Y'all need for? to get on down here to E-Win Racing and make sure you catch you a chair right now. For By sure. down here, I mean down to the website. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, these chairs are hella comfortable. We had hella. to get some more. This is not our first time getting some chairs from E-Win Racing. Shout out to you guys yeah. for definitely hitting us up about this. And, and it's a product that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. We finally had some more sent to us for the studio gaming setup and the home gaming setup man oh, yeah, so man. definitely we're, we're we're proud to you know be able to let you guys know about this product man and the great thing is they're durable holds up to 400 pounds see they laughed at me when they yeah. see me jumping on the chair yeah. last time but yeah you know you had to give it a tester and i that's it's it holds up to its word yeah, you know, 400 pound with no issue and they also have 4d chair armrests as well yeah these Dude. armrests are amazing especially when you're in those situations where a lot of times i find myself editing so it's good to have an armrest that i can adjust or when you're gaming mm -hmm. and you're kind of locked in in the mold you know you can adjust it to your height of your gaming desk or whatever desk you're using yep. and the quality on these are top premier stitching leather i love the the pillows for the neck and the uh, lower back region yeah, no, so for sure. there'll be times where we'll be gaming a lot or just editing videos and you know you want to be as comfortable as possible if you're sitting down for many many hours like we do when we're doing a live stream yeah man and a couple of more things this uh they also have hubless casters on this mm -hmm. uh which is pretty cool as well and also comparing this one to the xl chairs that they have um when you think about height Mm -hmm. This one adjusts to a pretty nice height where I actually keep, keep your feet off the uh, the actual Look how floor. Tall I am, man. My, my feet yeah. are dangling right yeah. now. He got taller than me. I, I'm, that's Just like crazy, that. man. Yeah. And watch this. Wait. Oh, oh yeah. Just there with ease. You, with ease. Did you hear anything? Nope. Yeah, mm -hmm. nope. that's what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> hey, I'm not going to keep trying to sell you guys, man. You already know what to do, man. Make sure you go to the actual link that we have down below, man. It is our affiliate link. Mm -hmm. You use the code CLUTCH. Yes. Uh, so make sure y'all go doing that right now, man. Even racing heavy-duty gaming chairs are top-notch. We wouldn't really be bragging about them this much if they weren't. Yeah, so, and it's the perfect gift to give for Christmas. And 
by clicking the link you support the channel as well exactly man so make sure you go get an e-ring game and racing chair right now uh you get more wins when you're comfortable while you're playing the game Facts. come on but appreciate you guys man and again thanks to e-ring racing for sending these over thank y'all so all right we're gonna start with which one we're gonna start with day one wwe day one day one for me was it was it was okay it wasn't that bad i think the highlight for wwe day one is the seth rollins roman reigns feud and seth rollins coming out there with the uh, as this with the shield gimmick and trying to get under roman reigns skin and for the first time in quite some time we see roman reigns uh pretty much he just loses it man he intentionally just dis gets disqualified and it was a great match it, the the atmosphere of wwe day one felt really big and honestly even though you know there were some questionable booking decisions and stuff like that um bobby lashley getting the win over uh over uh uh, uh brock lesnar you know i wish they would have did that differently because you know that was a first time match and they kind of really didn't go into great detail and really give chance uh bobby lashley a chance to really uh seem like a credible threat to brock lesnar overall in general that pay-per-view i'm gonna go ahead and give it i'm gonna give that a b that was a b level pay-per-view it wasn't bad there were some things on there that was quite enjoyable i'm gonna give that a b all right let's go to the royal rumble now this one right here ladies and gents this will probably put I, I think, honestly, this may be the lowest ranking pay-per-view on this show. Oh, for, for 2022, on, on my tier list, it's going to be the lowest ranking pay-per-view. I don't know why I said show. But the Royal Rumble this year, especially the matches, the men's and women matches, I just, I, I, I could care less. I, I, I honestly could care less. When you had Ronda Rousey come out there, I was like, all right, well, Ronda's winning this you know what I'm saying like it, it just I was just I didn't care I, I didn't care especially with the men's with Shane McMahon coming out there and doing what he did and trying to make himself the center point and then Brock Lesnar coming out there to win it I honestly I didn't care you're there to see who's going to potentially main event Wrestlemania it just it was just so like it, it made me feel like damn bro what about the people that are actually there um, what about the people that are there day in, day out, week in, win, week out, and and this is it, it didn't hype me up for WrestleMania. I can tell you that much. This is probably one of the the it will be the lowest ranking tier uh, for me. Uh, I'm a, I'm gonna have to put this. I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. I'm gonna give this a D, bro. Royal Rumble this year was not good, bro. That's one. That's one pay per view I know for a fact I will not go back and watch. It was not that good. It it wasn't. I'm just be honest with you. So we're going with WrestleMania 38 this year. Um, I'm gonna group them together. Uh, cause you know you got night one and night two. But if I had to choose night one, I'm not gonna lie to you. Night one was surprisingly really really well. Night one, in my opinion, was my favorite night. Night two was okay. Was not as bad. Uh, I think the main event didn't live up to the hype, but night one was fantastic. Stone Cold returning, having an impromptu match. Cody Rose coming back to one of the loudest ovations we've seen in quite some time in WWE outside of Bray Wyatt coming back to WWE. That was amazing. That match with Seth Rollins was amazing. Hell, Logan Paul showing out at WrestleMania this year was pretty good with his uh, tag team match with uh, The Miz going against the Mysterio. I thought Mysterios, I thought that was good, man. Overall, night one was just great. Night two had some really great moments as well. And if you had to group them together, this was a good WrestleMania this year. I'm not even going to lie, lie to you. Um, honestly, I got to give WrestleMania, that's an A. That's an A tier right there. That was a really good pay-per-view um wrestlemania hasn't been that good in my opinion since damn near wrestlemania 31 that was like the last pay-per-view last time wrestlemania in my opinion has been very very good so i'm going with that one okay next one wrestlemania backlash this is pretty much just rematches i ain't really care for it I, i'm a i'm gonna give this a c uh the show i mean it, it wasn't bad by any means, but once again, it was mostly rematches, and uh, they had some good matches on there for sure. But I'm gonna give a go ahead and give this a C. It's 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 kind of in the middle of the road. It's not bad, but honestly, I mean, 
if you saw WrestleMania, you pretty much got a whole bunch of rematches and and, and just uh, it, it didn't. I, I really wish they would get rid of the WrestleMania part and just stick with the backlash part. I think that just gives it its own separate thing because we know backlash is traditionally WrestleMania rematches, but you can spice up the feuds and it gives it that own identity. I don't like it's just basically WrestleMania extended. I don't I don't like that. I wish they would change the name of that. But other than that, it's, it's a C tier pay per view. All right, uh, I may be ending up going out of order on some of these, so that if um, from the when they originally dropped, so um, if that's the case, that's the case. All right, we're gonna do. I gotta do elimination chamber. I forgot to do elimination chamber because elimination chamber came before um, um, uh, WrestleMania. Elimination chamber was okay. I think the most noticeable thing you can remember is uh austin theory getting murdered <laughs> uh that was a crazy thing uh him getting murdered from the top of the the cell by brock lesnar so um honestly that's kind of it, it eliminated shimmer was okay i'm gonna give that a c tier that's a c tier right there that's a c tier it wasn't anything that you know was just something that you can go back and really watch other than the men's match but the men pretty much all got squashed by brock so i give that a c tier all right, let's get into Money in the Bank. Money in the Bank. I'm going to go ahead and give that. I don't know. That's a tough one. That's a that's a real tough one. Because Money in the Bank wasn't bad, but I think the, the decisions that were made kind of pissed people off. Austin Theory, I know we were all wanting someone new and fresh, but I think giving Austin Theory, I don't have a problem with him winning it. It's how he won it. Because he pretty much just got inserted at the last second. And it kind of had people feeling some type of way. Like, it, it you know, it, it definitely had some people kind of like, eh, I don't know what's going on here. Then you have to, uh, it, 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 to me, I feel like they kind of dropped the ball here. Uh, just booking wise, especially Vince McMahon. I'm going to go ahead and give this a C pay-per-view. Uh, just because of the outcomes. Yes, live winning was cool. But at the same time. When you really look back at it, I'm okay with Liv winning, but I don't think she should have cashed in at night. I think she should have possibly just held it out so they can extend it a little bit further and maybe make that memorable moment for when she does cash in that more special. So I'm going to give that a C. All righty, let's go to... We got to go to Hell in a Cell, man. Hell in a Cell, I'm going to go ahead. It was a good pay-per-view. I'm going to go ahead and give this one a B. This is a B. And what makes Hell in a Cell probably a B is for the first time in quite some time, the Hell in a Cell structure really, it it it, it made sense for a particular feud. Granted, they could have done the match without the Hell in a Cell. You know what feud I'm talking about? Cody versus Seth Rollins. I think Hell in a Cell was, did some justice by the injury of Cody Rhodes because it looked like he was going through hell when he came out there with a torn peck and wrestled a match in a hell in a cell cage that the is cody being injured made that match uh 10 times even better because we knew he was in real pain he was going through hell to win this was such a good match such a good feud you had uh seth rollins trolling cody rhodes with the polka dots from his dad that his dad used to wear in his out on his outfits it was so great Cody Rhodes hitting the pedigree and hitting Seth Rollins with the sledgehammer was cool. Also, Cody Rhodes getting hit with his own finishing rule crossovers. It was just, it was so, it was such a good match. And he, anything that Cody did, you felt the pain that he was feeling. This is one of the first times in a long time when Cody took off his jacket, people got quiet because they knew he's really hurt and he's about to wrestle in the Hell in a Cell match. And this is. People didn't know what to expect. This was one of the very few times Hell in a Cell, it, it, it lived up to his name. And I think a lot of people are going to rate this pay-per-view really high just because of that match. And I can't get mad at you. It's a B tier for sure. All right. Let's get into where things really started ramping up. SummerSlam. This was the last pay-per-view pretty much Vince McMahon had you know pretty much set up everything in motion he wasn't there for that pay-per-view triple h had took over at this point but 
the match had already been set. The card had already been set. SummerSlam, without a doubt, is an A-tier pay-per-view. SummerSlam hasn't been this fun in quite some time. Like, legitimately fun. The matches was good. And, uh, um, I want to say that is when, uh, yeah, Logan Paul, this was his second match. Had a fantastic match with The Miz at SummerSlam. And, of course, probably one of the best last man standing matches ever. And is e arguably, in my opinion, just off fun factor alone, the best Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar match. Because we didn't want to see this no more, but we finally saw it, and bro, it was fantastic. People are going to remember this SummerSlam for the infamous Brock Lesnar lifting up the wrestling ring with a tractor as Roman Reigns rolls out the ring. Fantastic. Michael Cole going crazy telling Brock Lesnar to stop, goddammit. Stop getting up. This was so fucking fun. It was chaotic. I love this match. This is one of the best match. This was arguably their best match they've had outside of WrestleMania 31 uh, between Roman and Brock. This was fun. This was a it was a party for the summer. You had uh Bailey coming back with Dakota Kai and uh EO um and Io Shirai, that, that was a great moment. Uh, Becky Lynch turning babyface. It, it was so many good moments from this show. It was really a party for the summer. And SummerSlam hadn't been this good in quite some time as well. So this was a good one. And it belongs in the A tier. All right, man. We get into the nitty gritty now. We're getting to some of the best pay-per-views of the year. I'm going to go with... Um, I'm trying to trying to maintain order so if i have to i'm gonna go clash at the castle bro that what are we talking about it's a tier i don't i don't even have to say anything clash at the castle is is, is a tier it, it's one of the best shows wwe has put on all year the crowd was amazing the matches most of the matches were fantastic edge Teaming up with the Mysterios. Take on Judgment Day. Fantastic. Walter versus Sheamus. Match of the night. Fantastic. Crowd. Fantastic. Seth Rollins, Matt Riddle. The lead up was great. The match was okay, but still enjoyable. Fantastic. The main event. One of the best matches Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns has ever had, including that atmosphere. Fantastic. I recommend those who haven't seen Clash at the Castle this year, go watch it. It's up there. It deserves to be there with WrestleMania and SummerSlam this year. Great pay-per-view. Great pay-per-view. And once again, shout out to the UK crowd. You guys showed up and showed out. And I hope WWE makes this a tradition and comes back overseas. Because y'all deserve all types of shows. Because you guys know how to... You guys know how to turn up to a wrestling event and show out. All right. So the next one, we have Extreme Rules. Honestly, Extreme Rules, for the first time in a long time, they had some pretty, think there were some extreme stipulations or extremist stipulations, bro. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Extreme Rules was really, really good. I'm putting this, for the first time in, in, in a long time, I'm putting this in the A category, man. Extreme Rules was great. The most noticeable thing is, <laughs> is, uh, the I quit match with Edge and having Beth Phoenix being sent to the damn gulags will always just make this an A tier. There was they actually had stipulations for matches and it made sense. The fight pick could have been a little bit better, but they made it a big deal. Oh, and the fact that, you know, Bray Wyatt returned. Come on, bro. Bray Wyatt returned. One of the biggest pops. We've gotten all here. It's Bray Wyatt returning. A tier, man. A tier. Fun, fun pay per view. Extreme Rules hasn't been fun in quite some time. And Triple H was able to knock it out the park with this one. Right. Crown Jewel. Usually the Crown Jewels aren't that good. But this one is pretty goddamn good, man. I'm going to go ahead and give this a B tier, man. Crown Jewel was fun. Had some uh, great matches on there. And like, like we, you know. These Saudi shows sometimes take away and they don't really make sense in the grand scheme of things. But I can appreciate this show because there were some good matches and I was entertained. I wasn't I wasn't bored throughout the show. I had a good time. I'm going with Crown Jewel in the B tier category because uh, it's 
is something that honestly if you wanted to and in my opinion i think it's probably the best crown jewel they've ever done and a lot of people have said that it's the best crown jewel they've ever done so honestly this is actually worth a rewatch so i would definitely put that in a b tier category and the last one survivor series that's a tier man what are we talking about survivor series hasn't been this fun in my opinion since nxt was involved this was great and the fact that triple h brought war games to survivor series it made you want to check it out this wasn't about brand warfare it was just people going to war teams groups of people going to war with each other and it was fantastic and we got one of the greatest moments emotional moments Sami Zayn being embraced by jay uso the bloodline standing victorious it was great future storylines was set up this was fun this was ultimately fun war games made survivor series that more important and hopefully maybe this could be a tradition maybe you have war games as survivor series as a tradition to keep it because that brand warfare stuff let me cut that out because they only start to do that towards survivor series no i think you should have war games as a yearly staple for survivor series just to give it that extra oomph and it, it seem make it seem that important and it's cool to see one uh the the major pay-per-view finally get some relevance and love that is it is so rightfully deserved and that's my list man we got wrestlemania here uh wrestlemania uh 38 as uh tier a we got SummerSlam, clash at the castle extreme rules and survivor series tier b day one hell in a cell crown jewel tier c wrestlemania backlash uh, elimination chamber money in the bank and tier d which is sad to say the royal rumble because that in my opinion was my least favorite pay-per-view for the outcomes um and it, it just it, it it did not hit like it was supposed to but yeah comment down below let me know man how do you guys rank these tiers as well uh let me know what oh not these tiers but how you rank these pay-per-views what tiers would you guys put each one of these pay-per-views in man let me know i really want to get your guys opinion on that uh and we can just have that discussion in the uh comment section man but yeah this year has been pretty solid for some pay-per-views and i'm looking forward to what triple h has in store for us for 2023 because i think he's gonna ramp it up even more man that's the one thing i can say the shows may not have been as good as we would have hoped them in the triple h era for the the weekly shows but the ple's or the pay-per-views whatever you want to call them they have been stellar and i love it and i'm looking forward to it so comment down below let me know how would you guys rank the pay-per-views for this year for 2022 on the main roster for WWE. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.